morning everyone, Chris here with another video for you all. I am in my 2020 GLC 63 coupe and I've been kind of waiting to do a video like this because I don't want to, you know, review a car that I've had for like 200 miles. So I'm currently sitting at a little over 800. Had the car uh, a little bit over a month now. Let's listen to this. I didn't hear that. Anyway, I've had the car for a little over a month now. Uh, no, a little over two months. No, a little over a month. It's already February. Uh, Mid-February, actually. Listen. That was the highest I've had my RPMs. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. But I'm glad I did because it sounded good. With these Mercedes, you're supposed to uh, take it easy on them for the first thousand miles. It's supposed to not have the RPMs above 4,500, but you know, it's all right to get the RPMs up. Had the car for a while now, put several hundred miles on it, and I wanted to give you guys a quick little review, or you know, my first impressions on the car, and you know, what I like about it, what I hate about it, I don't hate anything about this actually. Um, and I'm heading to the toy box right now, I figured I'd bring you guys along with, I'm going to give this thing a much needed bath. I rinsed it off in my garage the other day, and kicked off, you know, some of the salt but uh, it needs to be detailed. So I've got lots of things to talk about here. Lots of exciting stuff coming up. See, so just <laughs> even driving this thing like mildly, it sounds amazing. As I was saying, lots of things coming up to talk about. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna wash the car and just talk about things that are happening and and yeah so stay tuned okay made it to the toy box i'm gonna like i said a couple seconds ago i'm gonna wash up the glc it looks pretty clean right now this car looks, this car looks good all the time i like this car uh we gotta talk to you guys about that bad boy right there but first i gotta move this trailer out of the way so I have room to do what I need to do. This feather like trailers are really nice, but that front wheel that you know that the tongue sits on, those things suck. So here's my 2020 GLC 63S Coupe. Bought this from a local Mercedes dealership who had it available. It's pretty pretty close to what I would option it out if I were to build one myself. It's a nice dark gray. I think they call this just, just a granite. I'm pretty sure it's like a dark granite is the name. This has that hand built, you know, I think it's, they say 63, that's what it used to be, but I think it's like a 4.0 liter. Something like that. I know they I know the they came down in size. But it's got nice black and red Napa leather interior. It's got kind of a brush aluminum trim here with kind of a fake wood trim right here. Pretty optioned out. It's got nice Burmester audio. Standard seats, I believe, not the performance sport ones. Sport ones. I like, I like cars that have, you know, that the headrest is not separate from the, the backrest. But this has just the standard seats. That's my little sunshade, ignore that. It's a pretty sweet car. It's not very tall. Here, I'll come stand by it. See the, I'm, I'm 5'11". And you know, I stand above it like maybe 10 inches or so, eight inches, 10 inches, something like that. So it's a pretty small car. I've, with the Cayenne, that's one thing that I wanted was to go smaller in physical size. I don't know why. Cayenne's a great size also. Uh, but I don't know, I just wanted something smaller. And I think this is like the number one selling SUV from Mercedes. The GLE is the next step up in physical size in the GLS, but the GLC, I think is, I think this is a GLA also. Uh, GLC is their number one selling SUV. So I'm gonna fill up some buckets. I brought everything from my house because I don't know how much I'm gonna be detailing cars there, so that's why there's way too much money in buckets sitting right here uh, but anyway it's winter time i'm not gonna be 
washing in my house anytime soon. So let's fill up these buckets. Just gonna fill this one up in, in here for now. I wanna use up some of my product. So I've got, I've just got way too much product here, so I'm gonna try to use some up today. This is Amel's Brute Soap for wheels. Just use the rest of that up here. This is probably way too hot. Yep. See, I'm gonna use this mitt. I don't need this. I do need that though. We had a pretty good Super Bowl party here for this year's game. Usually it's at my parents' house because they have a pretty good area for it. Okay, so 2020 GLC. I have washed, I wanted to film my first bath with it, but I've, I've cleaned it several times since I got it. So when I buy cars, I, I take everything in consideration, including, uh, including uh, cleaning them. That's kind of a little, probably weird to think of it. You know, buying a car based on how well it cleans up or how it cleans, but I, just something I think about. Adam's tire cleaner, Adam's wheel cleaner. It's been so cold here lately that it's been tough to clean this thing because one day it's minus 15, the next it's 20 above and we're getting 10 inches of snow. And then today is supposed to get up to like 39. So a lot of that snow is going to melt probably. And yesterday, or what's today? Today's Saturday. Uh, you guys don't want a weather report, but it was like minus 19 or something like that on Thursday here in Minnesota. I've cleaned this car a few times now. And these wheels, as predicted, I think I said that in one of my, in my video that I, when I got it. These aren't the greatest to clean. It's not bad, it's just, you know, it's... It's not like, like the Viper where I can just one swipe and basically get the entire rim. But this mitt from Adams actually makes it pretty enjoyable. So we've been going back and forward with the city about the expansion of this place. We finally got everything approved. We got the steel manufacturers. Um, all set so we're in the queue for them meaning like you know we're on their schedule to to get all the necessary pieces made for this we had some some where is it there's some issues there it is with the structural uh, like supports back there on this building they weren't they weren't made to mirror this building exactly. So uh, by that I mean the like the load that the roof is able to take for snow. It's not up to code. Maybe it was in you know, 2006 when this building was made, but I don't know, this was made in 2016, the house was made in 2006. But things have changed and requirements for commercial buildings like this have changed so we have to restructure those supports behind me there to allow uh, I should get this to to allow the roof to look how we want it to look which is an exact mirror of this side so it slopes this way uh, east and we want it to slope the opposite way west on the expanded part if that makes sense
and winter. what it's so nice having a space like this to clean cars in i've done it in my garage for years and it's not always easy <laughs> not always fun uh okay so let me talk to you guys while i'm doing the wheels about this car i keep going keep getting off topic sorry um so I, the reason i elected to go for the gls whoa the glc over like the macan was a availability for local dealerships meaning what dealerships had available. And B, I've been looking at these cars for a while, the GLC that is, the GLC 63, because it is a pretty affordable car. Some of you guys who've been watching my channel for a while may remember when I had that Trackhawk. Before I got the Trackhawk, I was looking at GLC 63s. But at the time I had a, a Wrangler and I wasn't willing to pony up the difference between the Wrangler and a GLC 63. So instead I went to the uh, Mercedes GLE, just like a, like a, I think it was like a GLE 43, that's right, the 43. And then should have done it right away, but I wanted more power. So that's why I got the track cock. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up is like, why did I go with this over something like a little bit more known for performance like that? Anyway. Uh, the GLC is something that I picked over like the Macan Turbo and what else is there? Like the Q5, SQ5, uh, X3M, X4M, I guess it'd be the, be the one. Uh, because A, availability and also we get extremely, like Feldman's is our local dealer, one of them at least, and they take such good care of us that it's tough not to, you know, buy from them. They gave me a discount on this and they gave me $10,000 more. That, that's right, that's right, I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic. Um, local Porsche dealership, they offered me 75 for my Cayenne S. Sticker on that was like 106, I think. The whole thing was clear broad as an immaculate shape. Offered me 75, so I shopped it out a little bit approached Feldman's, haven't bought a Mercedes for a while, and they offered me 85. And then they offered me a discount on this. And then they helped me with the uh, clear bra, just like Porsche had in the past. So to me, it was a no brainer to go to something I've been looking at for a while. Meaning, meaning this, and yeah, I'm really glad I did. I, Porsche is still my, my favorite brand. I think it always will be, but this thing bang for the buck, honestly. I mean, yeah, it's an $89,000 MSRP car. That's a lot of money for, for anything. But let's compare it to, let me bring back the Trackhawk. Trackhawk was like 105 or something. Dealership tried selling it for like five grand over sticker. I said, no, they said, okay. But I don't think that was a $105,000 valuable car. You remember the video of me showing you guys just like some of the like the nuances about it, the things that just annoyed me. Things like the damn glove box not shutting and then the creak and the and the uh, sunroof. You know, for a hundred thousand dollars, whether it's a Jeep or not, I don't think I would expect something like that. But so that's that Trackhawk had, you know, all sorts of little issues that were livable, but I don't think were acceptable for a car that costs $100,000. So that's why I went towards, you know, uh, a higher end brand like BMW or Mercedes or Porsche. <sighs> the, the Porsche was, was awesome. I loved having that Cayenne. I didn't need to trade it in. It just, I wanted to, because I, I, I wanted something smaller and faster. So this this car right here is $10,000 cheaper, okay? And then the, that, that uh, or no more than that, like $15,000 cheaper than the Trackhawk that I got. And you know what, it's just as fast. 
I think Mercedes claims they're to 60 in 3.4 or 3.6. I haven't, well, you guys saw the, <laughs> the video, you know, earlier, earlier in this, or the clip earlier in this video, that was the highest I've had the RPMs up on this car so far. And that wasn't even that high. And that thing just kicked me back. Like I haven't done like a launch in this vehicle yet because I'm, I'm only at 800 miles. I'm trying to be patient and abide by the AMG rules with the whole, you know, thousand miles or less. You gotta, that sort of baby the car a little bit. It's kind of like the Trackhawk. Trackhawk is 500 miles. Um, anyway, the little bit that I have pushed this car, it's been just, it's a beast. And the fact that it costs less than my Cayenne is faster. And I don't want to say better, but there's things about it that I think are better. Such as like the sound and the power and the seats and the seats aren't bad in the Cayenne. What am I saying? I'm not saying they're bad actually. I'm saying that they're just better. Man, Minnesota winters suck. Yeah, these wheels have just, I think it's 20 spokes. Looks like it. You have to get into every crevice. That's one thing. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about things I don't like about this car. It's not many, but these wheels, I don't say that I wouldn't like them. It just takes more time, which is fine, but that's, that's worth the couple more minutes to clean them just because they look good. Uh, the things I don't like about this car, the, really the only thing I can think of, honestly guys, is the gas tank. It's a very small tank. I get like 250 miles per tank versus the Cayenne, which I think had a ex uh, extended size or a larger, a larger tank, like 23 gallons or something. So this just has a small tank. The miles per gallon is basically identical as the Cayenne. I'm getting, I don't drive on the highway at all. I just, my, my computer just doesn't require me to. That and I don't like driving on highways because every single time I'm on the highway, I seem to get hit by rocks or stones or sand or salt or something. So that's why I don't drive on the highway, but I'm getting like 16 or so, between 15 and 16 miles per gallon. Which, you know, for a little SUV like this, I don't think is that great, but you gotta remember this thing is also a twin turbo V8 pushing like 516 horsepower or something like that. Just, just crazy. And in, in the inside, I'll show you guys later, there's a sunroof and I think this is genius. I think, you know, you gotta think of like which, which, you know, Germans got together to make this car, design it. <laughs> Who was the guy that was like, let's, let's, let's put vents. That's like a Russian accent. I'm not even gonna try it. Let's put vents in the, in the sunroof to prevent it from frosting over. I was, in any car that I had with, with a sunroof, if I have a little bit of moisture, like if I walk, if I leave here, you know, there's a little bit of moisture on the inside of the car just from it being wet or cold, you know, that those windows can get frosted over. And the sunroof has a vent on it that prevents that. It's a, it's a vent that is open to the cabin. So all the air that's in the cabin is, you know, circulating. It's also going up through the window. Small details like that to me are awesome. I feel like this video is bouncing a thousand different directions. I gotta talk to you guys about the GT tube. I think I'm gonna do that in another video. Because this can be this can be cleaning and talking about the GLC. You know I haven't really talked about that much. So let me talk about it. So my parents really like this car and my mom does. She's, she's a big Mercedes fan. They have a GL E 63 right now. And she doesn't drive that much, but you know, it's kind of important for her to have her independence. They work together, obviously, or you guys don't know that, but they work together. So they come into work to, they come into work together every day. So there's no reason to really drive separate, but, you know, weekends and if my mom has like an appointment or something like that, it's nice to have for her to have her independent so she's always kind of had her own vehicle she went through the she went through a lexus stage she's you know buying those rx what was it like a 300 back in the day 2000 like early 2000s 
then they upgraded the RX 350 and then I think the 370. So she's kind of had her, you know, fair share of Lexus vehicles, but they changed those a lot. She's not really a fan of some of the technology they put into it. So she went towards uh, Mercedes, like my dad, and she's kind of stuck with it ever since. After I got my Cayenne S, my dad liked it so much that he wanted one. And because they had a 2018 GLE that was my mom's car, the, what, the one they're currently driving, basically just on, it's basically being stored because again, my mom doesn't drive that much. So they drove their black GLE for like two years while that white one was just sitting there. So that's what they're driving now. So it's a two year old vehicle and it's coming up ready for to be traded in. So in anticipation for that, that's when my dad bought that Cayenne Turbo. So now that this GLE is on the chopping block for them, they ordered a GLC 63 just like this, but not the coupe. My mom doesn't like the, the visibility out the rear window. I don't see a problem with it personally, but she likes the more of the SUV style rear end. So we ordered one. She really likes this. She, she, I, think, she, I think it's basically identical to the same wheels, same color different seats the seats that i was talking about with the you know where the headrest is part of the seat not separate you know by that i mean like, like there's no you can't adjust it and things like that so she's gonna have a little bit nicer seats than i am but i didn't build this card it was just available inventory otherwise i would have done that anyway so that should come in in probably like another two or three months so then my dad's gonna start driving the cayenne turbo as his daily I don't know where I was going at with this. Did I do this yet? You know, when you think of Mercedes, me at least, I do think it's like an older person vehicle to some extent. Maybe not so much like the AMGs. Maybe some of my parents driving for the last couple of years. Water softener is so nice. This is that Kinetical brand. It eliminates the need for any of those filters that Matt sells. Here's the camera, and you guys can see. This is our heating and softened water system, I guess you can call it. It's Kinetical, so there's three nice big filters back there. Salt in the reservoir, in the, you know, it's called reservoir, the, the tank right there. Water heater allows us some nice softened water. Because the water here in Minnesota, it's not the greatest, even though we got, you know, like 11,000 plus lakes. <laughs> it's a lot of iron in the, in the in the water here. I just got adjusted. The water's showing it's right around 105 degrees. Seems kind of high. Don't do it. Wheel bucket's always the dirtiest. Prince this guy down. I hope the camera's picking up that beating. I've uh, washed it again, like I said, several times. And I apply that, you know, wet coat, and then I top it off with the Atom ceramic coating. That's that, uh, I don't know the name of it is, it's that kind of spray on, wipe off deal. I think it's a good combination. I'm gonna use up some of this product. I'm gonna use up, I think. What do we got? When I say I got a lot of product, I'm not kidding. It's too much. I've got this whole cabinet filled with. So this this section is the stuff I want to use up first. Uh, nothing wrong with it. I just wanna just wanna use it up so I can get at using the Adams stuff. 
Yeah, and this stuff I gotta get up, get used up also. So I think I'll use up some foam from ammo. Yeah, there should be some winter boost in here too somewhere. There it is. Good amount of soap in there. Some boost in there. I'm gonna put the same stuff in my foam cannon. I'm gonna do a 50-50 mix. Get close to it. So it doesn't foam up as nice as other stuff. Okay. There's a good liberal amount of soap. Can't wait for summertime. This basically is just a really great sized vehicle. I'm a big fan of the coupe line in the back. Nothing wrong with the SUV line, but something like this looks more masculine and sporty to me. Just a good looking car. Yeah, let that soak for a little bit. It's been about two minutes, I'd say. Soap stays on there pretty good. I wasn't sure how, you know, if the thickness was going to be all right, but it's doing pretty good, at least on these horizontal surfaces. I'm gonna rinse your mitt and flip your mitt as often as you can. So I'd usually do about half a panel. Like that. I don't put too much pressure on it. So let me talk about uh, that Camaro a little bit. Last time I feel like I did a washing video, I was, I think it might have been for the Camaro. I haven't gotten that check yet. It's been about a month, so I haven't even gotten paid for the thing yet. Bear Jackson, you know, when you buy a car from them, they demand the money right away, and everything, you know, you have to get pre-approved and credit checked and all sorts of stuff. But when you sell a car there, like I just said, it's been a month now, and I haven't even gotten paid for the damn car. Because they hold on to it for 30 days for some reason. But I'm, I said it before, I'm not, I'm not, you know, happy about the price that I got, but it's, it's about what I expected, to be honest. I think some of you guys also predicted around 130 or something. And I'm netting out under that. But it could have been a lot worse. Especially because that, that, that event was just flooded with rest of mod cars so it's what do you really expect you know when there's too much competition i miss it though i miss coming here and seeing it <laughs> it was like my baby you know i built that thing for three years lost sleep over it lost a lot of money over it but whatever it's it's bittersweet time to let her go someone got a really good buy Hope that they enjoy the car. Hopefully they have it by now. 
I assume that they do. Look at this, being able to wash this. I rough with this car without stepping on the tires or running boards or getting the ladder. It's nice. I don't know if I'll go back to a, a mid size SUV anymore. Her again. I was thinking next, I'd go after the Macan Turbo. That's what I was thinking, looking at before this. But they just they just redid the Macan. I'm not gonna about to go buy something like that at least. Uh, when the brand new version's coming out in a couple couple weeks now. I think they're gonna start hitting dealerships in around around April, May. And since Mercedes just redid this, I thought it was perfect timing. I did put snow tires on here. These come from the factory with performance tires. But here in Minnesota, if you have performance tires, it's like driving on hockey pucks. In the winter time, very unsafe. So I put snow tires, and I'll probably honestly run these all year. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, they're gonna wear down a little bit faster. But you know, tires are fairly cheap. And I'll just keep the stock ones for when I trade this in. You know, you can trade it in, like that has some value to dealerships where the tires are brand new. Uh, but anyway, I'm just not like I'm gonna be taking this thing on the track. You know, so I don't need the, the grip of the performance tires. This thing like the Cayenne was all clear broad prior to taking delivery of it. Everything except the tail lights for some reason and this rear wing, they are having a hard time getting the, the film to stick to it. So they just like not to, not to protect it, which is okay, I guess. You can see how often I'm dunking my, my mitt. I know that back here is the dirtiest part, hopefully me rinsing it and doing the, the foam, you know, before washing it. Took care of a lot of the crap that's left down here. But the more you dunk your mitt, the better, even if the car is dirty or clean. Like here, I'm gonna rinse from there. I need to do more driving videos. I think. I love cleaning cars. I like watching cars get cleaned. One thing that's kind of cool about this is that the rear view camera is inside this Mercedes emblem. So to open up the trunk, you have to physically push at the top right here. This will rotate or pivot. Trunk will open up, but when you put the car in reverse, it also comes out and reveals your backup camera. Which was cool about that is that it's never exposed to all the all the crap. You know, the back end of cars is always the dirtiest. And, you know, crap gets kicked up there, salt, exhaust fumes, things like that. And the camera will never be exposed to any of that because it's hidden. So every time I put this car in reverse, I have a very clean and clear view of what's behind me. Super cool feature, I think. I think this is one of the more popular Mercedes because the cost of it. You know, this is a, this, this vehicle is under $100,000. That only outperforms their GLE, but it's also cheaper. Granted, it's got cheaper materials. Like there's no a lot of things come standard on the GLE 63. I think like carbon fiber accents and stuff like that. That's an option on here. I think, it's a, I think it is an option on the GLE 63 also. Anyway. But like, like the small things, like the buttons on the inside, I can show you that later. The, like the air conditioning buttons. There's a lot more play, you could say. 
and this one compared to like my dad's GLE. So you do get, I guess, I guess the quality, you know, is better on the GLE because it is you know, a higher value car. But I mean, is that is that worth another 15 grand, 20 grand? Maybe. That spray silicone stuff I've been using is awesome. I like this car a lot. Cleans up really nice too. You know, it doesn't have weird hidden lines. I just collect crap. That's the other thing for like, another bang for your buck deals, like everything that comes standard on here. You know, you get the premium package or whatever it's called. It comes with a ton of this stuff, but you know, like I have the surround view camera system on here. I really use a, like a brush for this front area. But I feel like this mitt gets it well enough. Especially if I'm thorough. The auto show's coming up. Let's see why I'm bringing a camera to that. Okay. Let's go ahead and rinse this off. There's been this debate online lately that's what's better, sheeting or beading. I think it's all opinion. Sheeting, I think, dries the car better, but beading is just, it looks better. I keep thinking I hear someone outside. Okay, let's spray some wet coat on here. I love this stuff, or anything like it. And gone are the days of waxing your car to keep it protected. And you can do this and and be done with it, you know, start to finish in under five minutes. Under probably two minutes, actually. I do use a very liberal amount, yes. One reason I'm trying to use this stuff up, too, is if I'm gonna use it, why not use it? that off. I really don't know what they can come out with that's easier than this. Maybe nothing that's easier, but maybe this can last longer or something. It's gotta be the next next big thing. So let me show you this combo that I've been doing when I dry my cars. So you just saw me put some Gion wet coat on there. I'm using that stuff up before I get to the, what do they call it? Adams has their version of it, you know, but then I go to Adams spray coating. This stuff's really great. You just kind of spray it on and you, you, I use it as a drying aid. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it should be used. All right. Well, according to this, I'm not using it properly. I've been using this as a drying aid. It should be on a dry vehicle. So I'm not going to, I'm going to put this away. I'm going to dry it off. 
Adam's towels are incredible. I bet I could dry two or three vehicles with this one towel before having to replace it. Ah, shoot, I always forget to do this. I always intend to blow out the little crevices before taking a towel to the paint. That's all that water does is just drip and drip and drip for a while. Let's do this quick. I like these DeWalt blowers because this is rubber. You know, if it's going to hit the car, it's not going to do any damage. I basically, I don't dry the whole vehicle with this, obviously. I just go for like the little areas where water can collect. Like that badge. Okay, where was I? I like the lines on this car. Everything just kind of flows flawlessly and smooth from one piece to the other. And like this line right here that goes from the roof to the quarter panel door area. Just flawless. So I rinsed this off in my garage the other day. Oh, that was dumb. So I let, let the water just evaporate on it. Now I'm seeing some watermarks. That sucks. But luckily it's clear broad, so I'm not gonna be scratching the paint and removing those watermarks. So it's like a little detailing spray or something. I'm coming off of this. Should have just came here and washed it. Alright, so that the car is pretty dry. Maybe I should talk about the car instead of whatever else I was talking about throughout this video. So if you haven't seen these, check out how this Rear trunk opens up. So see this Mercedes emblem, you literally just push it in like that. I'll show you one more time. And then underneath here is where the camera is too. Cool. Put this towel to the side, grab another one. I don't like using the same towel on the door jams as I do the paint, just because I might, you know, there might be some extra dripping that occurs. So I want to use that damp towel to catch it versus, or when it's clean, versus the one that I use for the door jams, because sometimes crud ends up collecting in the door jams, like this. Maintain the car, oh, the clean, you know, the cleanliness of the car enough you don't really have to worry about that as much versus like a car that goes months without a bath this one doesn't go very long without a bath like all my cars so the seals and jams with all the nooks and crannies tend to stay pretty clean this back seat's pretty small i'm never gonna i don't really have any kids once in a while back here for the most part this back seat is just here for bags or whatever I end up picking up to go into. Driver's seat is where all the fun stuff happens. So this is going to be the dirtiest. Picked up some new tools to help me clean mats and things like that. Picked up one of those, uh, like a drill brush it's called. You attach it to your, like just a basic drill. And it allows you to scrub things that, you know, at the speed of the drill. So I'm going to use that on the mats here. I think today, at least the driver's side. Is that sunshade that I use? I think it's... The sun's pretty intense sometimes. I don't want it to hit my... hit my dash. So I'll put that up. Like an old man. But it works. I see this isn't, I mean, that's, that's pretty dirty actually. But this isn't as dirty as it could be given our winners. So this is what all would have been on my drying towel had I kept using that versus something new. Most of this honestly probably came from the driver's side. I should have done that one last. 
and now I'm just like moving my hand towards the edge so I don't rub the dirty parts in. I'm gonna put this tall away and grab one of these red ones that I got from Larry. These are kind of my, not my throwaway towels, but my use on areas I don't want to use a nice towel on towels. This car having so many spokes, it's not as bad as I, was, as I thought. It just takes more time. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm, I have to touch every single spoke to dry it and make sure there's no water spots, which is not that big of a deal. I'm going to do this in real time while I'm talking about it. and That's basically done. It's going to be a little bit more detailed. That wet coat doesn't react well with brand new towels. It's best to get these a little damp before you dry with them, because otherwise you're just kind of pushing water around like I am doing right now. Towel's absorbing a little bit, but not as much as if it were damp, which is that kind of weird how a damp towel attracts more water than a dry towel. I always thought that was kind of weird. Kids just kicking my back, back of my seat. I restocked my Zano leather soft spray. If you guys haven't tried that stuff, I highly recommend it. It smells good, but it does a really good job cleaning up the leather. But most importantly, it smells good. It smells like leather, I guess. Which is what I want in a leather cleaner. It's for it to smell like leather. Not like 409. So now that this towel is getting more damp, it's absorbing more. That was my first time using that red mitt on these wheels. I gotta use that more often. The reason why I stopped using it is because it dyed all my white Adams towels pink. Stupid, I don't know if I should have. I should. It's probably my fault for washing it with white towels. But I didn't think that it would bleed like that because you know, I wash these with the white towels too and these don't bleed. Now I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish drying this this car. I'll do that off camera just because it's tedious. And then when I come back, I'm gonna I'm gonna properly try to apply that Adam's ceramic spray. I think I've been doing it wrong this whole time. So hang on. Okay, so I've been using this product for uh, I'd say like five months now. This bottle's maybe maybe one fourth the way gone. I think I've been using it wrong the entire time. I don't want to say wrong, but I think I've been using it in not the most efficient way. What I've been doing it doing is, uh, you know, I'll come around, I'll spray the wet coat, I'll rinse that off, and before I dry the car, so it's got you know all the beads on top, I'll go around and I'll spray this on it. I'll go around the entire car, then I'll quickly go around with my towel, kind of working everything in, and I'll flip the towel and I'll kind of rub it in some more, <laughs> using it as more of a drying aid versus a ceramic spray on let cure for a minute or two wipe off type of product so i'm gonna try that this time got a brand new applicator pad here i'm just gonna take this off i'll see if this is any uh makes any more sense i mean obviously it's gonna make more sense but my thing is all jammed up. There we go. This stuff I think uh, corrodes at the tip. So it wants me to apply it on a, on a pad and then work it in. So I'm gonna do one section at a time. I can already tell this is gonna be so much better than what I've been doing because I'm actually kind of massaging it into the clear bra or the paint. I'm gonna spray on top of the car so some residual falls onto it. But this I think you want to do maybe one panel at a time. I'm gonna try doing this. That's probably not needed. I like always say I'm gonna do it as per the instructions and I still do it my way. So I'm working it in as if I would uh, a wax up that overspray. I'm supposed to let this stuff cure for a minute or two 
and then wipe it away. And then after that, I'm supposed to let it dry for like four hours. So I can't do that, unfortunately. I gotta go back home. But I'll let it, I'm gonna make another video here today since I'm here about the GT2. But so this thing will cure for maybe 45 minutes. Okay, well, I'm liking the ease of application. Yeah, I feel like this is definitely doing a better job than what I was doing before. My bad. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit on there while I finish up the front, and then I'll then I'll go and wipe it all off. I think if it sits there for more than a minute or two, it's not gonna hurt anything. Although I'm supposed to be following the directions here, so let me let me hurry up with this. Let's finish these. This front end, and then I'll wipe off the hood. This is doing it, nice doing it this way too, because I can see where it's actually being applied. Which is just kind of spraying, praying. Almost dropped my applicator. I spray it on the pad too. It's more focused on one area versus wherever the stuff floats and lands on too. All right, I'm gonna do this quarter panel and I'll start wiping off the hood. And by the time I'm done with the hood, hopefully the areas I've just done are ready to be wiped off. I think they just came out with another version of this or a new version, maybe a better version. I thought I saw something, maybe I'm wrong. All right, so I'm gonna put this right here, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna grab a new towel. Grab one of these guys. Start buffing it off. Oh, it comes off really nice. Might have let it sit a little bit too long. It's coming off nicely. Not putting too much pressure down. Might have let it sit a little too long. I'll hurry up and get to the other parts so it's faster. See if there's any difference there. Okay, I'm just gonna go right to the parts that I just did. It's probably been at least a minute. I wonder if I've got to flip my towel more often. And the paint quality of this Mercedes is so nice. I'm touching clear bra, but you know, I can see the paint obviously through the clear bra. It's really nice. I like Mercedes. I said before, uh, I think it's kind of an older, matured, uh, person's car, that's the best way to put it, but I don't know, this is pretty, pretty mean looking I think. Okay, you flip to a fresh side of the towel and stuff just comes right off. Now that I'm up and close with this clear bra, there's lots of little, more bubbles in here than I thought there would be. I saw before. It's alright, the bubbles don't really bug me, surprisingly. Alright, well look at this. Just a quick application on the hood. Looks nice and shiny. Let's keep going. Look at this on the windshield too. I don't see why I couldn't go on. So this is a clear broad windshield. No different than the clear broad uh, paint. Same thing with these windows. Here I'll probably do one door at a time. These doors are... Oh, I'll just try one.
I like these handle pretty good because I like grabbing the handles when they're nice and slippery and clean. Nice. I just gotta buff it in more. That's what my deal was. Should have two towels, I think. See how it comes off the glass. This is raw glass. It's not filmed or anything. Seems nice. Oh God. Okay, I'm gonna keep on doing this. You guys probably don't care to to watch me uh, apply this to the whole car. So I'm gonna shut off the camera and pick back up when I'm done. All right, I just got done wiping off the last of the Adams ceramic spray. I, I was talking during the cleaning process, but I don't know how much of that footage I'm gonna actually use because I feel like I was rambling a lot, talking about stuff that is it relevant to what I want this video to be about? So let's talk about the car. Things I like about it, things I don't like about it, etc. So here's the outside of the car, obviously. And I think the color is, uh, I think they just call it granite, to be honest. I think it's just granite is the name of the color. It's got these 21, maybe these are 22s actually. No, these are 21 inch wheels. Won't be my first pick because the amount of spokes, there's 20 of them, it's kind of detail to get every single spoke clean but I don't I mean I don't mind it I wouldn't I'd, I'd pick these again I wish that this brushed aluminum was standard as either black or this was also brushed aluminum the chrome around the rear uh, taillights but then that kind of incorporates the rear exhaust also but this is more of like a like a polished chrome versus like a glossy chrome if that makes sense this mirrors this more than it does this but it's kind of in between uh the overall shape of the car let me get a let me get a side profile of this if i can try that be in the way but the overall shape of the car i think is very very good very nice to look at it's not feminine it's got very it, i mean it's curvy but it's also edgy at the same time you know it's it's, it's aggressive like look at the look at this back end here i don't know that that to me is pretty Pretty aggressive looking. Looks good in a stable. The GLC SUV comes out a little bit more, not as slope as this coupe. Let's see here. Things I don't like about this car, I talked about it, I think, already, but the gas tank. I think it's like a 16 or 17 gallon tank, which leaves me with about 250 miles per tank. I get about 15 to 16 miles per gallon with this car which honestly is a little bit lower than what I expected. It's a small car, yeah, but, but it is a V8 pushing almost 520 horsepower. So it's got, you know, it's, it's got a lot of power and that, that requires a lot of, a lot of fuel. Uh, the car's not very tall, which I really like. That was one thing about the Cayenne. The Cayenne came, you know, probably 10 inches taller than this. And I like that I can, I thought I can reach over to the top, right in the middle of the of the roof to clean and detail it without having to take out a stool or step on a tire. What else? I don't have a front plate on there because I think it looks terrible. I like the lights on this. Let me see if I can see this. They, they changed the key for 2020. This is a completely redesigned or new model year GLC. So this is new. That's not gonna turn on. Maybe I gotta maybe open up a door or something. Let's try it. Try not to touch this too much because I just got that ceramic spray. Okay, that's not gonna work. Ah, uh, what else? I like that. I like these. What do they call this? It's like an A-shaped grill. So it kind of kind of comes up on the sides here in the shape of an A. I like that. I think they also call it like a panorama, panamera, panorama, panoramic, something like that grill on here 
I like these huge intakes. It's kind of weird that there's a like a radiator at the bottom of of it, but these intakes are sweet. Kind of wish this was this is part of that Distronic, so that's solid. But I kind of wish that was hollow. Look at these lights. These are those LED from Mercedes. When these things turn on. I gotta figure out where that's coming from actually because it, it puts on kind of a pretty slick light show. I'll try to remember to film that when I leave here. Hopefully it's not too bright to see. But the, like the lights will, you know, when you shine forward, they kind of go, kind of come back and forward. Pretty slick. It's got some huge brakes on here. It's just a super nice car. This is, uh, again, going to be kind of my 800 mile review. You saw earlier, I kind of got the RPMs up to around 5,000. That's the most that they've ever <laughs> been up on this car. And it really put me in my seat. It's pretty aggressive. Let's check out the inside. So this is a optional interior color where it's red and black. So typically this would all be black, but this is an upgrade to a Napa leather, I believe and they accent it with the, with the red, same thing on the seats. And a little bit of Alcantara in here that matches the steering wheel. The headliner is not Alcantara. This, this part is really cool. So this vent right here, see these, these slots? That allows the air that's within the cabin to kind of circulate through up towards here. So whenever, like for example, if I were to leave here and I didn't dry this car properly and let's say moisture got into the inside, and right now it's like it's like eight degrees outside. I want to say it's a lot better than yesterday. But you know if that if that moisture got in here and froze and I didn't have a heated garage, you know that could very well like freeze onto my wind on, on this this sunroof here. But having these vents here like so allows some a little bit of air circulation and it's not, not much is needed. But you know it's enough. But you know it gets the sunroof prevented from uh, freezing over. Now this is all new for 2020, this in full infotainment system. All new, this is that kind of a fake wood accent here. Uh, I think I got my key, no I don't. But this is all new. The instrument cluster, see 800 and, I don't know if it showed. Okay, 815 miles on her now. And this little sticker up here is a reminder that you're supposed to keep it under 4,500 RPMs uh, until 1,000 miles. I always keep my interior lights off. I wish this was suede, but it is the GLC, not the GLE, so it's a little bit cheaper. Back seat is pretty small, but I don't ever have anyone back here, really, except for some kids. So I got my seat set to my position, right? I'm 5'11". And I've got, hopefully you can see me, I've got plenty of room. I got maybe, I sit, I sit straight up, I got maybe two fingers between my head and the roof. But between here and here, I got a good four or five inches. It's definitely small back here, but it's not, you know, I'm never going to be back here. But it's not small enough where you couldn't, let me shut this. Yeah, I, could, I could sit back here for a trip. This is cool back here. Oh, vent. I've never been back here. Hopefully that's open. Slick. I like these door handles that they're, they're, they're not electric, like the Q8. You don't have this, like, um, much of a mechanical feeling when you release it. I like the lights on here. Look at that. That's a cool picture. But the most important thing that I, not, not most important, it's the wrong word, but my favorite thing about this car is the sound. Insert audio clip.
so between between that sound and the just the, the aesthetics and the feel of the cards i know i say this about a lot of the cards that i get uh let me put this up so porsche is my favorite brand for sure uh just like the the, the, the status of it the quality everything about porsche I, I just love but going from the cayenne to this i think i like this more it's cheaper it's faster it's louder it sounds more it has it has so much more character in the sound you know the, the cayenne was a single turbo v6 and it sounds like a porsche i mean porsches don't sound the greatest except for that gt2 but the way this sounds you know nothing beats an eight cylinder engine and even like a naturally aspirated like a yukon or something those things even sound pretty badass i think but you have a 520 horsepower twin turbo v8 and this thing it sounds amazing uh things again things i don't like about it i wish that the seats came standard more sporty but i understand why they don't offer that as a standard option and i wish that the fuel tank was larger that's basically it everything else you know the price it's not that expensive to insure um I wish that they had an all season tire option from the factory. So I didn't have to put snow tires on here. What else? That's pretty much it. I like this car. Everything, everything about it I like. I mean, I can deal with the you know, smaller fuel tank. Just have to fill up more often. I have to fill up every 250 miles roughly instead of 430, which is what the Cayenne was. But I don't know, it's just it's a really sweet car and, it, and it's, it's, it's not surprising that this is this model, the GLC, not necessarily the 63 Coupe, but it's, no, it's not surprising that this is Mercedes best selling SUV. The size of it is great. The cost of it is, you really can't beat it. I mean, for $89,000 89, is what this sticker was. You know, let's compare that to something else like the Trackhawk, for example, that was a $105,000 SUV. And what do you get from that? You get a big ass supercharged 6.4 liter, uh, I think it's 6.4, right? 6.4 liter engine. You get remote start. You get all, all season tires. If you order it that way, you get Brembo brakes, which produces a shitload of brake dust, but it's still a Jeep. You know, it's not for less money or for the same amount of money. Let's go with that. For the same amount of money, I got the Cayenne S, right? Uh, MSRP was almost identical. It's not as fast. But what you get for your money, you know, the quality of the build, it's so much nicer than something like the Jeep. Might not be as fast, like I said, but the quality of the ride, everything is nicer. This is cheaper than the Cayenne. It's faster, it's louder, it's smaller, it's, I think, more efficient. What else could have compared to this? Like, a, like an X4M, X3M sort of, different body style. Uh, SQ5, the Porsche Macan Turbo. I would have totally bought one of those had they been available but maybe not because the the new version just was released with you know with light bar and the hole on the, on the back and the turbos should be coming out april may i think is when they're going to start hitting dealerships and I, i've never been one to you know like a paintball and, and like that I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna wait 12 months to buy a car because it's the successor is coming out in another year i think the 2021 model the, the of the Macan is going to be electric. Kind of like the Taycan, Taycan. I got a story about the Taycan here coming up. That's for another video. Uh, but you know, so what I, what I, should I trade this in on a 2021 Macan Turbo? Or I guess it'd be a 2020, I'm not going to trade this in on a 2020 Macan Turbo because the 2021 might be electric. I'm throwing around the idea of getting an electric vehicle. I've said before, I was, I almost, before this, I almost got a, I ordered a Model X. The performance version um then i canceled it like 15 minutes later eight the hundred dollar loss whatever but that was because i didn't want to pay you know kind of like the track hawk i didn't want to pay a hundred thousand dollars for something that's less quality than this and this might not have the you know the gadgets the doors the electronic uh drivetrain everything like that but i think the quality i don't think i know the quality of this is a, a lot better than that of a Tesla. Let me bring you on the inside real quick. I'll talk to you about some of the features or the differences between the GLC and why I didn't go for the GLE, but some of the differences between the two. So I wanted a, I wanted the smaller size. I wanted the, the, the lesser cost and a smaller size of this. I bring it into the inside and like small things that kind of don't rub me the wrong way, but like this is, this is just me nitpicking. Okay. I'm trying to find something to 
Oh, I might see him picking that up. But see, there's a little bit of play in these buttons. Nothing in here, really. But like on the GLE, like this quality button is down here. Oh, this is just nitpicking. But like, it's a button, I don't know. I know that's small things, but I noticed all the small things, like the creaks and the everything else on cars that I don't think need belong there. So, okay, I'm gonna keep on, uh, I'm gonna keep on um, cleaning the inside of this. So I'm gonna end the video here. This is a, a quick, a very quick review. I'm gonna do so much more with these, you know, all these cars in a couple months once the snow and salt is off the road. I'm just limited uh, because of that. Well, I'm gonna end this video here. I'm gonna make another video while I'm here regarding that GT2. So stay tuned for that after you watch this one. Uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.